Now, I think this is the most overpriced piece of shit battleship I have ever built. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Taskmaster Tuesday for Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. I am recording this a few days early. Um, I know that there is the full version of the 1.05 uh, coming out eventually. It's supposed to be coming this week. And by the time that you're watching this, the version might have already launched. So if some of the other content creators that are joining this one have the different version, then so be it. The task for this week is an interesting one. Brother Monroe crafted this one. We're starting in 1930 at 25,000 meter range. I can pick what nation I want to be, and I can pick what nation I want to fight. The task is very simple, as Brother Monroe writes it. You design both your own ship and the enemy ship. Your score is the difference in price between the enemy ship and your own if you sink it. For instance, if your ship costs 100 million and the enemy ship is 300 million, then your score would be 200 million, but only if you sunk the enemy vessel. If you can't sink the enemy, then your score is zero. So we can get quite a lot of points depending on the difference in price. So I'm going to have to design two ships, which is fairly unusual. And um, I'm going to try and make the price difference as big as possible while I can still sink the target. The other content creators joining me for this week are Brother Monroe and um, Spartan Elite. You can find them linked down below. I'm not sure if Serious Strategy Gamer is joining. If so, you can find him linked down below in the description as well. All right, let's get to work because we got quite a design process ahead. Um, I'm going to start with the enemy. I'm going to start with the enemy. Now, if you want to ramp up the price of a ship, you make it really fast. You give it a lot of crew like an elite crew, uh, you give it a lot of crew as well, so spacious quarters, so that they're already looking at a price tag of 1.2 billion. You make sure that they use gas turbines, or at least the most advanced engines that are available. Like gas turbines are going to put it to almost 2 billion, but a turboelectric drive puts it at 3.7 billion. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, bulkheads are going to work against me, so I'm not going to give them that, but I will give them range which is going to push it up a little more. I'm going to make the ship bigger, 4 billion. Um, the most advanced main tower, the most advanced secondary tower, or at least the most expensive one. And let's see how hard I can cheese this challenge. What is expensive? What is expensive? This is expensive. A super tall bar bet for 790,000. Not sure why you would want one, but hey, um, I'm just trying to make this thing as expensive as possible. Krupp armor reduces the armor cost, or reduces the armor weight, but not the cost. Oh, an auxiliary engine. Boom! 5.8 million. Billion, actually. Um, we might have to reduce speed somewhat. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Um, the ship has to have main guns. At least two. But they don't have to be big. I mean, a single 9-incher can do the job. Actually, they... This is going to be an absolutely atrocious ship. Probably the worst I've built. Because I could just have two single Baron 9-inchers. Right? Oh, we got empty barbettes. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, crap. I cannot put that on there. Okay. These don't contribute that much. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I got it. I can reduce the armor. The easier I make this thing to sink, the better it'll be. So I can reduce the armor to nothing. Because armor generally isn't very expensive. It doesn't help. So we're going to reduce that to zero, this to zero. Everything to zero. Uh, we're going to put on the most advanced radar I can find. The most advanced radio that I can find. No, that doesn't add much. Acoustics. Nah. Not as much as I would like. Rangefinder, then. Not really. Improved loading systems? Barely. What makes a ship expensive? No. Who needs a Citadel, anyway? Citadels are overrated. 
Um, Anti-torpedo blisters just make the ship heavy. They don't make it expensive. I think that what's going to make it more expensive is more speed. There we go, 5.7 billion. Now we're talking. Uh, this... Plus 60% engine cost per weight. Yes, that's more like it. Steam steering. Engine cost per weight, 170% bonus. Yes. This thing is going to get extremely... Big. <laughs> oh, it's extremely big. Um, the turrets are not very well placed. Go figure. But the ship is also a bit too heavy for what it does. Let's see, I'm looking at a ship that's worth 12 billion. Uh, where can I save some stuff? 35 knots? Oh, crap, that took off a lot. 37, 38, no, 38 is too much, 37.5? No. You get this gigantic leap somewhere around 37.2 or 37.3. Watch this. We're now looking at a ship that's 107,000 tons and 4.2 billion. 37.3. Still in the green. 37.4. 37.5 I think is the leap. Boom! All of a sudden, when you want to do 0.1 not more, you're looking at this vast increase. This is incredible. Can I make this thing smaller? No. No, no, no. Um... I do want maximum speed. We're just gonna have to reduce probably the draft. No, beam, I think. The wider it is, it's more stable, but it also makes it a bit more difficult. If I go for draft. Too much. Less draft means it's even easier to sink. I mean, it already has absolutely no armor. I was... Quite enjoying this 12 billion price tag. Uh, no, that's not going to do it. Cut that. Go to 38 knots. It's way too heavy for what it does. Way too heavy. I cannot reduce armor anymore. I can reduce armor on the guns, I suppose. But that's really not making a dent. No, it's the beam and draft sliders. We're looking at a ship that's worth 8 billion. There, that's the max. If I reduce this and boost this. 8.4 billion. No, having more draft and less beam seems to be the way to go. Come on, get to the magic number there. There you go. All right, very nice battleship for sale, 8.8 .8 billion. Uh, it's gonna set off 150,000 tons of displacement. It is armed with two nine inch guns because it has to have guns. Its engine efficiency is absolutely dog shit. It has a lot of crew members to the tune of uh, 3,281. So that is a bit of an expensive boat. Now, I think this is the most overpriced piece of shit battleship I have ever built. Let's see how cheap I can make my ship to sink it. I essentially need nothing more than a really small, cheap dreadnought. I mean, I can do this with the lowest speed possible. I can do this with cadets. I'm not that concerned about that thing penning me. Uh, I don't need range. I need a cheap tower. I need this. That's the cheapest rear tower that I can find. I need a thick funnel. Funnel, funnel, funnel. Nope, get over here. Thick funnel. Here. Um, torpedo launchers would probably do it. I do need main guns. I can get 18 inch Mark II. That's 959,000 though. That's pretty expensive. No, we're going to go run of torpedoes, because this is 155k, but a torpedo launcher is going to set you back about 500k and give you a lot more punch. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, main gun, set line guns. 9 inch, there and there. 
I don't believe that that ship can turn very well, can it? 1200 meter turning circle. No, it will not turn very well. It also has no anti-flooding systems. It has no torpedo blisters. It has no bulkheads. So yeah, I can fairly easily torpedo that with a ship that's going to come in probably under 50 million, give or take a few. Let's make these 21 inches, 759,000. One, two, three, four. I think that ought to do it. I mean, that's 20 torpedo launchers per size. Sorry, uh, 16 torpedo launchers because you don't have the quintuples. You don't have the fives. If I make them electrics, I get a bit less range. So I get 12 kilometer range. Um, standards, 14.8. I'm also somewhat considering the issue of I need to be able to get there fast. So let's make this thing sleek. Make this thing small. I'm running Crip 1 armor. <laughs> it's pretty terrible. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, sorry. These things are falling off the ship. Uh, replace this. Reset the main tower. There. Torpedo launchers. One, two, three, four, five. 42 million. So I am... I'm a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the math after. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, 12.7 kilometers is when we're going to launch the torps. I will get there eventually at 16 knots. 16 knots. Uh, can I reduce bulkheads? Yeah, I suspect so. What can this 9-inch pen? At, let's say, 10,000 meters? 6.7 inches of armor. Hmm. Okay. If they hit me. That is. So 6.7 inches of armor means I can put this to half. I can put this to four. 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 Two. Two. Let's up armor the superstructure a little bit. I really do not want this thing to sink. 35 million. Uh, yeah, I think I don't need much more. Ship worth 35 million. Should be capable of taking on a ship that's worth 8.8 .8 billion. Right? Let's do it. Let's go take it down. Somewhere to the north. Yeah, this is gonna take me a little while. I'm maneuvering 16 knots with absolutely no engine efficiency. It's a pretty terrible dreadnought that I've built. But even at a price point of 35 million, it still has more firepower than this thing. I mean, this is... <laughs> this shouldn't exist. <laughs> I know Germans like to over-engineer their stuff. But this might not be what they had in mind. And the Duquesne... Oh, the Duquesne is pretty terrible for 1930s. I mean, not a great ship by any stretch of the imagination. Range, 22 kilometers. The one issue that I might have is a tiebreaker. Um, that is, if we, by some miracle, get to the same price tag, the exact same price tag, and I take more time to sink it, then that's probably not going to be good. By the way, we have the option here uh, to either build a battleship or a battle cruiser. Maybe a battle cruiser can go even cheaper, but I decided to go with a battleship because then you can get the dreadnought hull. Uh, I think the battle cruiser would be more expensive. Now this travel time is going to take me a little while. Uh, travel time for the torps is at 36 knots, still quite a bit of time. This is going to take me a little bit of time. We're now more or less in range of the enemy target with the torpedo launchers. Depends on where the target's moving to. Uh, she's... Oh, shit! Oh. Yeah, no. Um, I might have made a mistake here. The problem being that not only am I taking quite a bit of damage, but this thing is fast. 
I made this thing transit, what, 37 knots? 38? Oh, crap. I made a hell of a mistake. This thing is faster than my torpedoes. Oh, that's not good. I should have also given it minimum ammo, because it's gonna do me in with those 9-inch guns of hers. Uh, stop firing, HE. You can pen essentially the entire ship. And their accuracy, with their veteran level of crew, is kinda dangerous. Oh no, 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 no! No, 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 no. Stop running! Stop resisting arrest! Oh dear, this is problematic. I didn't think this through, did I? I still need to get to the actual target in order to get my torpedoes to be even launchable. Because the ship is heading away, which is exactly what it should be doing. And it's firing HE at me at the moment. The moment that this thing figures out that AP is actually a pretty good option, I might actually lose. Because I have not enough armor. Oh dear. I stood a pretty good chance of winning this, I thought. Up until the point where they started wrecking torpedo launchers, structural integrity, essentially everything. Holy crap, that was a full... full pen? For four points of damage. Oh no. Partial pen fire. I have few bulkheads, so the fires are hurting quite a lot. Half of the damage that I've taken is in fire damage. No! Okay, we're gonna have to launch aggressively. Even though the ship doesn't want to, I need those torpedoes in the water. Come on. Some of these torpedo launchers have already been knocked out. Two starboard, uh, sorry, two port ones have been knocked out. This one is probably... Yeah, it's available. It's functional. It's just that the ship's heading away. And because of that, I don't think that the Ken really wants to launch. Even though the torpedoes can run, I think, twice the range of what you see here. This is, let's say, the maximum feasible range. God, this is going to kill me, isn't it? Because this thing still has more than enough firepower. It's still firing HE shells, and it still has 78 of those. Ow. Just be patient. Ow. Ow. Damn accurate elite troopers on that ship. 8.8 billion. Not kidding. Ow. 44% structural. Yeah, no, that's more or less the zip code where the ship is. 66 shells. Ow! Torpedo launcher destroyed. No! I got too eager here. No! Fritjof, come this way, please. There is another concern that I have. If this ship decides that it's had enough, that it just does not want to fight me anymore, it will run away. It will run away, and I will never be able to catch it. Because it can do 38 knots, I can do 9. Considering all the damage that I've taken. Oh god, I should have made these standard torpedoes and launched them yesterday. Oh dear. <clears throat> and they still have accuracy. 33% structural, I'm going to completely fuck this up. I thought I had a great idea of making this thing extremely fast and extremely expensive and my ship extremely cheap, but this is not the way to go. This is not the way to go. 29% structural, the entire bow is gone. 12.3, they're staying at maximum range. Their AP range is actually 18 and a half. So is mine. But my gunners are pretty shit. 26% structural. They're down to 40 shells for HE. After that, they're going to start really di dishing out the damage with AP. So I suspect that they can very easily pen that. No, they can't. Okay. And it's just... Ah! Get over here, damn it. I won points. Could have scored so many points here. 
They're down to 30 shells. Keep it up. Survive. Two damaged engines. I'm down to five knots. At least I'm not flooding yet, but it's only a matter of time now. 23%. Three damaged engines. Speed reduced to two knots. I'll never catch it now. Ugh. Oh, and I thought I had a good chance here. I thought I had a good opportunity to get a lot of points and win this week. No. Absolutely not. Ugh. Sorry, guys. This is not happening. I have damaged it for 37 points of damage. That's it. God damn it. Eight shelves down to 13. Oh, sorry, 14 shells. 13. Partial pen. Look at you. 19% structural. I'm still burning like a crisp. It's 2100 damage out of 3800 is fire damage. At least that's going to stop. Because the HE is running out. What is this thing going to do after it's noticing that it's running out of HE? It's going to switch to AP. What's then when that is out? What's going to happen then? Because with the AP, it cannot pen me. HE is out. Switching to AP. Ricochet. This is going to take a while. Oh! Full pen? Onto the main tower. Yeah. Ricochet. When it runs out of ammo, what's it going to do? It has no secondaries. It won't try to ram me. It will just kind of sit there. Stop doing damage. The question is, is it going to run off or is it going to run to me? If it runs to me, I have an option. If it runs off, I, not, I don't. This is going to take a while. Okay, it's about to get interesting. The Fritjof's out of ammo. She has nothing left. No HE, no AP, no secondaries, nothing. What's she gonna do now? If she just continues to circle me, like I suspect that she will, then... No. She's moving into torpedo range. The Duquesne is completely wrecked. But I have torpedo launchers. If you could just really blunder into my range, I would be so happy. Because that's the only way that I'll ever get another torpedo to hit you. Well, not another, but any torpedo. We do have torpedo launchers available on this side. Uh, about 12. That's it. They're actually doing it. They're getting closer. 10.9 kilometer range. 10.8. 10.7. The ship itself is moving at 2 knots, the Duquesne. Uh, I do supposedly have rudder control. But I rather doubt that I'm actually going to be able to turn much. 9.8. Torpedoes away. These are sneaky torps. They're very hard to detect. This thing has no sonar. This could... Could still happen. You just gotta sacrifice like 88% of your structural integrity. But it could happen. Here. Here's the fish. Did you launch another cell though? Or is it just gonna take forever to reload? It's just gonna take forever to reload. Okay. Please tell me those torpedoes and this ship line up. I know I have cadets crewing this ship, but this is absolutely shit. This is not where the torpedoes are supposed to go, you dumb crew. Look at this! They detected torpedoes, yeah, but they don't care. Ah oh, man, this is not how it's supposed to go. 
Uh, ideally, I would turn the ship around and use any of the still functional torpedo launchers from the other side, which is just two launchers, so eight tubes, and hit them again, but... Ugh. At this rate, the Fritjof is just gonna, I don't know, circle me? And I'll be sitting here for another 2200 seconds, waiting to reload, because I have lost... <laughs> <laughs> I've lost 60% of my crew. <laughs> oh, this is not great. Also, I am running out of ammo myself. Oh, man. What sort of battle are you watching? I don't know. Launch the torpedoes. The ship is right there. Please. Rudder hard to port. I don't know. Maybe we can drift the other way. Just put up a sail on the bow with sheets or something. We might still be able to turn. Because I think I don't need to hit them very hard with torpedoes. This thing is going to flood out very quickly. Yes, is it happening? This launcher over here is looking at it. All hungry-like. Turn, 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 turn. Two and a half clicks out. Turn the damn torpedo launcher! It's happening. Torpedoes away. I just don't know if my crew has any sense in where these torpedoes are supposed to go. Well, this is looking pretty good. Is it still happening? Yes. That's one. That's a few more. Oh god, their damage control ability is very, 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 very good though. Like this buoyancy? Yes, it's dropping. But I didn't take the veteran crew into account. Oh no. I didn't take the veteran crew into account, so they were able to control this flooding very quickly. Yeah, it only flooded 9%. I need more than that. I'm now lobbing HE at 2 kilometer range, but if she continues to circle me, I have a surprise ready, eventually, on the other side of the ship. This is a roller coaster. Like, I thought I had no chance. And now I think I might have a chance. And I'm not exactly sure, because I'm not seeing that much happening. I don't know. I don't know, guys. It can very much go either way. These 9 inch guns are not really going to impress this ship that much. Partial pens only with HE. But I think the ship, the Fritsch office, is going to continue to circle me. Which is fine. Because it's giving me an opportunity to launch the starboard torpedoes and then reload the ports and vice versa. I have 51 torpedoes left. I just need to keep at it, I guess. Oh, they're starting to take more fire damage, but I have 14 shells left. Yay. 14 shells. Boom, boom. Or overpens. Look at this. The crew has a 100% chance to hit. Just 8 shells left to do it with. Come on. This is such a good torpedo range. Reach off. 83%. Boom. 3 shells. What I would love to see in this game is the ability to look over a weapon and get a tool tip on how long it's going to take them to reload. And I'm extremely grateful for the Fritjof to not sail off. There, we're both out of 9-inch ammunition. Lovely. I'm just waiting for the torpedo launchers on the port side to get ready. Which is not where the ship is. So, we're gonna have to do a full turn again. I think this arrow over here marks the rudder. So yeah, we are shifting the rudder, it's just gonna take me a while. Oh well. Cue the elevator music. Go on. 
one. We might have an option here to launch the starboard array. Yes! Torpedoes away. More torpedoes away. If this hits, we're going to shave off a serious amount of buoyancy and potentially structural integrity too. They detected it, but they can't change direction. Yeah, this is all going to hit. Boom, 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 boom. Eight. Twelve torps. Full hits. Engines are out. That's going to damage their ability to pump out water even more in case they had it in the first place. The ship is slowing down a lot. Buoyancy is dropping to 55%. 52, 51, 50. Ship is now doing about 11 knots. 43%. We might still pull this off. <laughs> yep, she's listing to starboard severely. Her starboard side is definitely flooded. Yeah, we might have an option here. It's not a great one, but hey. Just need to spend the next 40 minutes, 50 minutes reloading my torpedo tubes again. Although I still have the ones on the port side. But good luck getting the port side into range. Oh, they're still flooding. 15%. Fleet show off down to 9 knots. Looks like the deck is almost a wash. Yeah, it is. 12%. They're still flooding. 11%. They still have not fixed this flooding. 9... 10%. 9%? I mean, they got plenty of crew. Their damage control abilities are not impaired. 8%. 7? 6? It's... Yeah, it's happening. The Deccan's gonna win it. 5? Go on. 4? Keep those torpedoes accurate if you're gonna launch them. 3? Yes. No, they stopped the flooding. At th no, they didn't. It's 2%. Just hit him again. Yes. Give him the good news. Just keep in mind, this thing is only doing about 8.6 knots. It's not fast. 1%? That's, according to the damage indicator, it's not flooding, but it is. It is. More torpedoes away. We got him. Holy crap. I didn't think I'd see it. 35.7 million versus 8,812 million, aka 8.8 .8 billion. Yes, yeah, son. You're out of here. 0.7, 0.6, 0.5, 0.3. We're done. It happened. It took me two hours and a lot of elevator music, but I got it done. I got it done. So, that is the German Fritjof. With a lowly, lowly price of uh, 8.812 .8 billion. Uh, versus my little dreadnought from 35 million. 35 million seven. By the way, my little dreadnought sounds so much better than my little pony. I think that should be a new toy line, don't you think? Now, be sure to check out how the other guys did. Um, you're going to see my final score on the screen right about now. And I am curious to see what the other guys came up with and how they're going about it. So be sure to check them out. Linked down below in the description. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what your thoughts are. And if you have any good challenges for me or the other guys on Taskmaster Tuesday next week, post them down below in the comments. And the more up vetted, sorry, the more up votes you get for your comments, the more likely it is that we're going to see it and that we're going to consider it for the next week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you soon for more videos.